Tesla Powerwall. Kind of a cool little system, right? It has capacity of 13.5 kilowatt hours, and the better one, I think, has a 7.6 kilowatt inverter, which means you can back up your power in your house. Pretty cool, you can stack up multiple ones. It's like six or 10, I don't know. Overall, Tesla Powerwall, pretty cool. But here's the thing. Now Tesla has competition. I'm gonna take this video to test out what I got, the EP cube in my house. I set it up, tested it, went through some of the things that it has, and I'm going to explain why I kind of feel bad for Tesla. What's up, YouTube Jason here with Bite My Bits. Like I said, in today's video, I wanna talk about the EP Cube home battery backup solution. They sent one to me for some reason because I have no idea. I'm a DIY, just YOLO kind of guy, but that's what they chose to do, so here we are. Now I have three main subjects that I would like to discuss in this video. Number one, which I'm gonna touch base on, installation, uh, you know, just kind of like the quality and some stuff that I noticed while I was messing around with it, which by the way, to do this testing, I did not install it professionally because that's down the line. It's planned or it's being planned anyways. I did not do it professionally. Instead, I just kind of got everything hooked up. That way I can get the app going because they have an app kind of like Tesla. And I wanted to test some things out. There's actually two things I want to test. Uh, can a, a computer survive the relay switch built into the inverter that the EP cube has? And also, whenever the inverter kicks in, is it gonna drop it down to 110 volts, which I don't personally like because heaters and some old lights. And it, there are some other stuff that's actually not really important enough to talk about, but I set it up in not the most ideal way. What I'm saying is I don't feel comfortable actually showing what I did in order to set this up in a totally controlled and professional environment, but I do wanna talk about what I found. And EPQ did send this to me, looking back with the new eyes and what the system has to offer and how well it works. I wanna talk a little bit of crap on my old DIY setup where I have a closet with shelves and batteries wired together in a very questionable format that works hasn't started on fire but i do kind of want to point out the differences so i might touch base on that just a little bit towards the end of the video let's be honest it works but it's not pretty we'll get to that though so topic number one the ep cubed first of all this thing is huge there's different sizes but i personally got the 20 well 19.9 whatever kilowatt hour battery wall which is huge. I'm six foot one, it stands above me. I'm gonna say it's six three, it is ginormous. It weighs a bunch of weight. So if you didn't watch my last unboxing video, I kind of showcased how the EP cube system comes in a modular setup, right? Every battery that you get stacks on top of the other battery. And then on the top of that is the inverter. This is really, 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 really nice because it allows you to install it with ease, only having to lift like 70 pounds at a time to stack it up and get it going without having to lift an entire like four or five, 600 pound thing just all at once. So you have your batteries, you stack all of those up. I have six of them, and then you have your inverter on the top. It has a couple different ways to install it. You can either staple it to the wall outside, which is maybe what I'm gonna do, where it's not sitting on the ground, but instead it's being supported by your house. It's just, you know, duct tape and zip ties up into your house. That's a joke, EPQ, please calm down. It also has the option to use the same brackets to attach it to a wall, but also sit on the ground. And they say that they kind of sort of recommend putting it in your garage, which is why I considered that. But like the, the panels all the way over there, I wanted to put the thing right outside where the panel is, very few wires, whereas the garage is up over all the way over and it would take just way more wires than I'm willing to run. So I'm kind of back to my original installation idea. Now, aside from the batteries and inverter, you will also have a smart gateway that goes near your electrical panel. And this thing is like, well, I mean, obviously it's the brains of the operation, but this thing is freaking like great quality, it has a lot of options to it. And I am really impressed by the way it's made. And let me explain. So EPQ, I get a lot of batteries, just random companies, and you don't really think they're gonna last. Well, EPQ seems to be a very well-established company to the point where they produce their own smart gateway stuff and they actually wire it all. And when I was into the insides of this, getting everything hooked up and wired, I just noticed 
Everything is super high quality, huge bus bars, everything's secured, no loose wires, everything's quality checked with markers, I mean, labeled. Now this smart gateway has an option to put breakers in there or to wire in a sub panel, stuff like that. You know, all the things you'd wanna back up in your house because you're installing a home backup power system. But it also has alternative inputs, well, obviously solar being one of them, but you can hook a generator up to it, which I have a generator which is kind of cool. Now the gateway itself for connectivity, it has Bluetooth, so you can kind of, you know, mess with it locally and get it set up and all that other stuff, but it also has Wi-Fi. that way it can communicate and do the things that it needs to do to the cloud so you can manage it from your app, et cetera. But just like the Tesla Powerwall, it also has a SIM card backup for data backup, just in case power goes down or whatever it can communicate. Now in my controlled test up setting environment, I, I really wanted to go through the installation process, hook up all the wires, make sure I kind of had a full understanding of how everything works. That way when I plan my installation, I know exactly what to expect. To give you the cliff notes here, you got a few things that you have to worry about. There is a 10 meter or 30 foot comm cable. It has five wires in there that communicates between the smart gateway and your battery stack. That I think they call it the hybrid unit. And then of course, you're gonna have to run your main power lines going from your smart gateway over to the hybrid station. What I liked about this is that actually the specs on the thing said like only an eight gauge, which I just happen to have a whole, well, a half a roll of eight gauge power wire. So that was really nice. I would imagine if you're installing it farther away or if you're going to daisy chain or stack additional EP cube units, you probably might want to, you know, make that size bigger. But just for the 7.6 kilowatt uh, inverter that's built into it, eight gauge is plenty. Everything else like connecting to the grid, generator, solar, whatever, uh, that can be right next to your, your circuit panel in your house. And because it's so close to that, it's less wires and it's easier to hook up. And you know, that's pretty much about it. You just need a couple wires going to your hybrid station and everything else is handled by the smart gateway. Here's the cool thing. The internals of this thing is built to handle a 200 amp circuit, which means that you could literally make the input, the main input of your house, your 200 amp feed that's coming into your house, go directly through the smart gateway. It can handle that. I personally am not gonna do that. Uh, I have my reasons, but I'm personally not gonna do that. Actually, you know what, let's touch base on the reasons. The main reasons are going to be like my dryer, electric dryer, my stove. I mean, things that are going to pull way more power than I'm ever gonna wanna put on batteries or you know, the batteries could even handle, the inverter could even handle. I don't want those things backed up with backup power. If I lose power, I just want those things to be dead. I want to back up things like garage door openers, lights, uh, computers, server, you know, I want to back up things that are reasonable. So I don't want a whole home backup. I want a partial home backup. So my setup essentially is going to be running a circuit breaker over to the smart panel. Smart panel is going to go to a sub panel that goes into my server room and maybe because it's right next to my circuit panel, uh, the smart gateway is, I might hook up a few other things like my garage door opener, et cetera, just things that I really want to keep online in the event of a power loss. But I absolutely do not want the 18,000 watts that my electric stove tries to kick in when it's like warming up. There's no way the EP cube can handle that. Not unless I get multiples, which I think you can do like six. That's 120 kilowatt hours. Like that, you can do six if you really want to. Yeah, Tesla 13, cool. My DIY setup is 11.5, you know? So getting into a Tesla Powerwall at 13 wouldn't really be a big upgrade for me, but 20? That's a good upgrade. So the next subject, once I got everything set up, again, controlled environment, don't wanna to show too much, but once I got everything set up, I really wanted to experience the app because one of Tesla's thing is you have an app. It shows you everything you're doing. It like lines out the power you're using, generating, storing, et cetera. You can change things with your power wall and the EP cube does exactly the same thing. Well, exactly the same thing is an exaggeration because I don't know for sure if all the features are the same, but it gives you a readout. It tells you what power is coming in, where it's going, uh, what things are backed up, everything. Like it just gives you this nice graphic like interface to show you exactly how your EPQ backup power unit is performing and what it's doing. You can see what's going out you get all your animations. You get, you know, customization screens where you can change a few things with it. Another example I found in the app is that they have a few different modes that you can pick from. Very simple ones like, you know, absorb power when power is cheap and then use the power when it's expensive to help save you on your bill. You could also do just a complete battery backup 
up all the time, which lithium, I won't get into the uh, degradation of battery on that because you know, it, it's just a thing, but that is an option. You can set the percentage, you can set it to that manually. And they even have like a weather detection app. So let's say you live in Florida and a hurricane's coming and you know, the app, you know, figures that out, says, hey, we're about to get smashed by some, you know, hurricanes, then it will charge up and get ready to be able to back up your house automatically if you just happen to have it on a different setting that maybe if the power went out, you only had like 50% capacity because you weren't planning on that emergency. I personally haven't turned on, I haven't really used it, but that is a very great feature to use, especially in Kansas, you know, like you get tornadoes and stuff. It'd be nice to kick in be like tornado warning let's charge your batteries. But overall, it's super nice to have that app. You can control it away from home. Maybe you're not home and you wanna make it back up or maybe you wanna change something, whatever. It's just nice being able to have that access. Now, earlier I did talk about two major tests that I wanted to do. Uh, things that I find important to me for my own reasons was the voltage that the inverter puts out and then how fast is the relay switch because it's honestly a pretty big relay just because of how much power it can handle overall. How fast was that switch and can a computer handle that without being shut off? And I don't know the switch time on this. I think I saw somewhere like 10 or maybe 20, but I'm gonna go with 10 millisecond. But what I did learn, plugging in a computer with a monitor, running it, everything, and then flipping the breaker off is that it switched over and the computer did not power off. That means that I can actually back up computers or servers or something in my house directly to the EP cube without having to route it through my UPS system that I have right now. My DIY system is a little weird. So I got, you know, UPS fast switch time that goes to another relay that's an invert. I'll talk about that in a second, but uh, yeah, I could bypass that knowing that the EP cube will be able to provide power fast enough in order to not shut down my computer. So that is a huge bonus for me. And the second thing is because I tested so many batteries, a lot of the inverters are like uh, 110 is the standard, right? So even though my house gets 124 volts, usually from the wall, that's what my grid power is. You get a battery and then you switch to an inverter. It's like 100, 910 volts, which is okay. Most things will run off of it. Not that big of a deal. Space heaters, fans, older light bulbs, things like that, resistive loads, you can notice the difference in voltage. They just don't perform as well. So that was another big thing for me is I wanted to see what the voltage was. And much to my surprise, again, I have 124 from the grid. Not only did this thing go over 120, but it was actually at like 123 volts. So I've actually had this whole thing set up in my, you know, controlled testing environment for a while. I've lost power, I've removed power, I've done a bunch of different random tests. I actually understand the entire process of the installation. So now I feel even more confident myself being able to do it correctly. I wanna take a moment, I wanna talk a little bit of crap on myself, but you know, a little bit of self-acknowledgement that it does work, it hasn't started on fire, and I have literally used it many, many times when I lost power, and it has worked flawlessly. It's my own DIY home setup power closet wall thing that I got going on in my server room. I'll show you. The gist of this thing is, is that I have a bunch of mismatched, different branded batteries wired together in a somehow functional way that hasn't caused a problem. I put all of these in a shelf in a closet, remove the doors from the closet just for, you know, keeping it cool. But uh, I put all of those in a closet, ran that over to the wall that's behind my server, which as you can see is, is uh, questionable at best. My favorite part of my whole setup is that I have like drywall and then I put a layer of like extra flammable plywood underneath it and then I put everything on the plywood there and on top of all of that I created homemade bus bars made of really thick copper and I put them really close to each other and they're exposed and you know the whole thing just it's a little weird and not to mention which I'm not going to dive into too much but I actually I actually wired away, it's a huge switch at the top of my setup that if I flip that switch, it takes the power from the input grid into the inverter to charge stuff and it reroutes the output back into the sub panel, which goes into my house, right? So I could back up like stuff in my house utilizing the DIY setup that I have in my server room. It is not a recommended thing. It works, I've used it 
at least three or four times. It, it's been a fantastic thing. There's some risk involved, but I think it, I think it's just a shining example of the DIY. Like I know what I'm doing, but I don't know what I'm doing and or I'm too lazy to do things the right way when I know I can do it somewhat the right way and have it work. So welcome to bite my bits. Again, looking back at what I have now versus what this new EP cube is going to do for me. It's just, it's night and day. So I don't know what I'm actually going to do with that whole setup with the EP cube. Probably be better to unwire it just because it is kind of a big risk, but it will be a thousand times easier to back up my house power and stay up and running in the event of a power loss. Well guys, that's about it. I know this has taken a while, but again, there's logistics behind all this. Working with the EP cube, bnbsucks.com allows you to buy NordVPN. Everyone else has a code, I have a code. If you use my code, I get a little bit of a bonus from it. So if you wanna support the shenanigans, that is definitely one way to throw support my way. Or if you wanna be a YouTube member and put money that way or tip money through YouTube, I don't know. So guys, thank you for watching. Like and subscribe. Please roast me in the comments down below and have yourself a fantastic day. My, my lip got stuck on my teeth. That was weird. <laughs>